So good afternoon, everyone, Bishop John Passard, Bishop Carol Juni, and of course, Paul, my friend from the Diocese of Paramaribo. I'd like to welcome all our viewers to the launch of a celebrating Catechetical Sunday 2021. So as we wait for our followers from throughout the region to join in on this conversation that we have, of course, celebrating all the glory and dedication, you know, that we receive from our catechists, our catechists throughout the region. You know, as we wait for the, our followers to come in, because it will take them a little while, maybe about a minute or so, um, for them to send the link to their other catechist friends and to also, you know, um, share it with, within their WhatsApp group. I just want to thank everyone for joining us on the conversation today as we launch Catechetical Sunday 2021 that is scheduled to take place this Sunday, the 19th of September. So welcome. Welcome, thank everyone. Thank you. Yes. So if our, if our catechists are joining us here on Facebook, we invite you to leave your comments in the comment section, you know, um, maybe share with us. And of course, our guests that we have today, all the joy and, you know, a testimony of your, of how much joy um, you experience being a catechist and maybe some of the memories that you have being a catechist. So you could always leave that in the comment section on Facebook. So Let's get into it. Um, Bishop Carroll, I have a question for you. Well, let's get the conversation started. Um, can you give a brief introduction about what exactly is catechesis? Catechesis is leading people uh, into the faith. Yes. And, um, it is God who calls us that we have to be open and um, I think uh, before we start teaching uh, content, uh, we <clears throat> must help each other to open up to God's grace uh, and His Spirit, so that uh, the faith can um, open and and bloom within us. for sharing that, Bishop, thank you. And Paul, can I ask you, being a catechist yourself, um, what is, can you give us a brief um, introduction as to what catechesis is? Um, for me, I simply describe it, that catechesis is getting to know God. Okay. And uh, knowing in what we call a biblical sense, a deep sense, you know, getting to know God, uh, after he has invited us him, uh, first to enter into a relationship with him and getting to know him, we do that through, uh, you know, throughout our whole life because I always say catechesis is a lifelong process. So you first get to know him through what your parents, your family uh, teach you about, about him after what you, what you get to know in school and as you go on into adulthood. There are different ways that God reveals himself to you. So for me, it is actually really getting to know God deeper and deeper uh, in this life. I, you know, um, Paul and Bishop, Carl and Bishop John, I could say safely that I could agree with that. You know, um, I would never forget my um, first communion teacher and how um, she was so interactive and dynamic. And she made learning about the Catholic faith so creative. And um, I remember being frightened at first, but she made the experience so comfortable and one that was very welcoming. So I could truly say that it is a, it is um, where I was able to meet God. Yes. So um, Bishop John, can you share with me, um, what is the significance of catechesis to our church? What is the significance of it? Sorry, I was I was muted. Yes. Catechesis is in fact very, very much an integral part of our church because it is that particular dimension through which 
we teach the faith, if you like, or pass on the faith. Therefore, our, our mission as a church to evangelize that, that, that original command, um, that original command of Jesus to the disciples to go and proclaim the good news to all nations, that spirit of evangelization, of mission, of going out to teach all, um, that is an integral part of the church. The church exists for mission. And the mission of the church can only be accomplished if we have those who will teach. Right? You have the initial kerygma, the proclamation of good news, the, 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 the initial contact, as Bishop Chuni said and, and Paul, that coming to know God. But then after that, we need instruction. We need a more formal, if you like, what does it mean to, to understand more deeply our faith. And so catechesis is about that teaching. Now, um, I, I don't mean necessarily a classroom thing, necessarily, but it is about that teaching of the, of the faith. And, and so it is extremely important to understand the life of the church depends heavily on catechesis because that's how she will continue to exist in the world by continuing to teach the faith to grow more and more each day. I'm not sure if if um, I'm being heard or, or not because a lot of different things have been happening on my screen. So does yes, that Bishop. answer the question? Yes, or it does. It, you, it does, yes. And you do seem to pick up a little bit of thing, but we heard clearly um, what you were saying and I hope our viewers heard clearly what you were saying as well, right? So um, thank you so much for sharing that, Bishop. Um, now, Paul, you being a catechist yourself, now this is a question that um, who exactly in the church does this kind of work? Who, in the, who exactly in our Caribbean Catholic Church does this kind of work? Uh, first of all, I, I should say that all of us who are baptized in the church and grown up in the church, all of us have a task at the catechesis. We are all catechists in some way or other. But of course, um, the church has a specific structure to make the, 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 the enterprise of catechesis more, more effective. So um, first of all, the bishops, uh, mm -hmm. have this task of being catechist. Um, and I refer them to the, uh, the, the bishops have a, what we call a, a threefold task as, mm -hmm. as, um, and, as their office. They are call it also the munus, that's Latin. They have the task of, of governing, the task of sanctifying. And mm -hmm. I think most importantly, the task of teaching. And catechesis is uh, by excellence, the, 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 the task of the bishop to, to teach. And then after the bishops, the priests and the deacons who assist the bishops in his task, they carry, they carry on the, these, these duties of, of uh, governing, uh, sanctifying, and teaching in the respective parishes. So they are also catechists in, in a sense. But yes. uh, the church, um, of course, the, 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 if they alone were to do it, I don't think they would have enough time <laughs> on their hands to fulfill, uh, to be to catechize all those who need to be catechized. So, um, we have in our church people who are specially appointed to do that work who, and especially when it comes to, um, uh, first of all, people who need to be initiated into our church, like to be baptized and, and receive confirmation and the Holy Eucharist, whether it be children or adults. We have people who are specially trained and formed to, to perform that role of, of catechizing. Um, I see also in our families, that the, the, the parents, they are there in the family, the first and the main catechists of their children. Uh, and I, my greatest wish is that this would be really something that we focus on more greatly nowadays because um, it is, it is uh, it's, it's a great challenge, you know, if you have to uh, work with, with children and, and young people in a parish, 
and to teach about, about the faith, where at home, the, 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 the foundation is not that strong. So, um, but I think most of us have had an experience of, that us, uh, of our parents being the very first catechist in our life. Well, before we go on to the next question, how long have you been a catechist? How many years experience do you have? Well, I was never really officially appointed as such. Um, okay. I, 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 but I started, uh, I was appointed as manager of the, uh, what I could, I could call the pastoral center in 2003, uh, okay. at the beginning of 2003. Wow. And part of my, my uh, portfolio as manager was also to uh, see about uh, the catechesis in our diocese. So nice. that, that until, that until, um, teaching or instructing um, and, and, and accompanying the catechist, developing catechetical material and so on. Wow. So you could say, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and, but I, um, I handed over my, my role as manager in 2015. So you could okay. say I, I officially worked as a catechist for 12 years. Wow, but, okay, but, nice. Um, but even before that and still now, uh, yes. Appeals are made to my to my, uh, my time and energy to to yes. the catechetical work. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that, Paul, and thank you as well for your service. So, Paul raised something that actually was my next question. And Bishop Carroll, I have a question. Well, I should say, as I continue the conversation, what are some of the challenges facing catechesis in our region? And I guess we could all discuss this. Yes, what are some of the challenges? But Bishop Car Carol, I, I invite you. Well, yes, yes, um, as Paul said, the first uh, and foremost educators are the parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's no noticeable that uh, uh, parents are not at ease to pray with the children, to go with the children to church. Um, uh, there are a few moments where the family as a family prays uh, together. And that is a real poverty of uh, mm -hmm. our time. The television has taken over <coughs> the uh, living room. And mm -hmm. uh, there's little time for that. Mm -hmm. the second thing is that uh, in the schools, uh, because the school builds on what is done in the home, <laughs> There are less uh, practicing Catholic teachers, and uh, the first communion and confirmation preparation just boils down to um, getting ready for the ceremony itself. Mm -hmm. So we have less motivated Catholic uh, teachers, okay. and then um, we have not been able to uh, plunge into the digital age. So the kids are constantly on their cell phones, but mm -hmm. we have not uh, found a way uh, to make use of that. Yes. And uh, even if uh, there are, because there are a lot of parables on uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. I mean, on internet. Internet <laughs> stuff, yes. <laughs> the, the kids are addicted to games. And, uh, yes. Um, of their own free will, you fairly seldom see them going to bible or uh, um, looking for religious uh, material right and then the uh, materialistic um, mm -hmm. philosophy in uh, mm -hmm. uh, our times mm -hmm. it's becoming more and more widespread that um, people are less um, convinced um, that there is a God, uh, we have now, uh, we've had the baby boom generation, we have the uh, millennials, and now we have the I generation. Now, one of the characteristics of the I generation is that the question where we come from, where we're going, are not so important. And um, uh, whereas, uh, the baby boomers and maybe even the the millennials who still ask but maybe there's not a god 
But there is something, uh, we won't call him Jesus, we won't call him Buddha, we won't call him anything, but there is something. They believe in something, and the I generation uh, has stopped. And that is, uh, uh, I realize, uh, a broad generalization. But in America, the United States, there are actually studies on that. And that um, has made also that a lot of uh, people have left the church. There is a dramatic uh, drop yes. in church attendance and people who right. really adhere and say that they belong to a particular church. And right. I'm not saying that it is the same for the Caribbean, but we all know that if they sneeze in the States, we catch the cold. Right, right, right. Um, thank you so much, Bishop, for sharing that. Um, um, Bishop John or Paul, would you like to add to the discussion? Well, I think Bishop Carroll did speak to quite a few of those challenges mm -hmm. there in our region. One of the things I think that also is, is in the mix there and maybe it's connected to what Bishop Carroll said is the whole hmm. Bishop might have frozen. Oh no, yes, I think he might have frozen. Bishop John is frozen. I think yes. he might be, a, yes. I think I, you I, might be. I have just one thing to add, if I may. I think he may be frozen. Um, mm -hmm. Bishop John, I think you may be frozen. Um, and he may not be able to well, hear that, us. I, He's coming I in in small talk. glitches. Yes. Lauren? One yes, of the, Bishop Carroll. Mm -hmm. One of the special challenges for Suriname is that we are Dutch speaking. So uh, we always have to uh, invent the wheel again. So even mm -hmm. there's even if there is a lot of uh, material present in the Caribbean or in Australia or in mm -hmm. the United States mm -hmm. or in Spain or in France, mm -hmm. we cannot just copy that, you know, and we have little personnel to develop uh, material, material. That, that is very uh, um, that's uh, up to date. Up to date. Okay, go ahead, John. Thank, yes, Bishop John. Sorry about that. Um, we welcome back, Bishop John. Yes. Oh, we can't hear you, Bishop. Are you here? We can't hear you. I'm not sure. I think. Would you like? I think you might need to leave and come back in, because we're not hearing you. Oh no, I'm not sure. This. No, I'm not hearing him either. So uh, yes. I think there's something oh, wrong no. with his audio. Yes, and it was working perfectly fine. Yeah. Bishop, can you yeah. un unmute yourself? Really? Talk now? No, we cannot hear no. you. You're not hearing him. No. Can I you think we should us? log out and try to log in again. Yes, log out, Bishop, and come back in. Come out the meeting and come back in. Great. As in, he would try to hear. Yeah. Maybe in the he meantime, I could either. Yes, Paul. Oh, so, okay. yes, um, yeah. yes, as we wait for Bishop John to come in and we continue the yeah. conversation, we want to apologize yeah. for the technical difficulties. And, Paul, before we go, um, you address some of the challenges. We just want to welcome, we have a couple of new viewers. So, we just want to welcome our new viewers. We have Bishop John Prasad, who is, well, he is coming in, the chairman of the Commission of Doctrine and Faith Formation, and of course, his co chair, Bishop Carol Chuni. And we have a very special catechist with us joining us. Paul. So Paul was going on to share some of the challenges he has experienced, you know, within this field. Yes. yes um, dur during my time as a manager of the Pastoral Center, one of the biggest challenges I was faced with, and I'm not sure if that is uh, also in uh, the rest of the Caribbean, but, mm -hmm. uh, but, but here especially, I, is the, um, just to find uh, the people who are actually willing to, you know, to involve themselves in, in catechesis. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's if it's a, a right conclusion, but um, I got a feeling that in, in the past, people were more willing to dedicate the time and the, and, and the talents to, to do something in the church, like, you know, like teaching catechetics. But uh, in my experience, it, it, I found this very difficult to get people to just, you know, to make time free and, and, and 
come to the church in the afternoon to, to do a catechesis class. People always have something else to do, you know, like uh, we, as if we live in an age where there is where people are busier than before and they, they have less or they are less willing to uh, spend a, a part of that time uh, for doing something for the church. That is uh, one of the greatest challenges I had experienced then and I think still going on. But I'm not sure if that is throughout the Caribbean or if it's only what I experience here in Suriname. Okay, um, no, I've, I've heard that, you know, working in church myself, I've heard that, yes, getting persons to be a part of, you know, um, teaching and fourth faith formation is definitely a struggle for us here, you know, volunteerism well, and stuff. But yes, Bishop, welcome back. The dimension of that is yeah. one of the challenges that we are faced with, which is yes. the mobility of our peoples. Right. I'm not sure that, that in Suriname, but most of the Caribbean and certainly Guyana, they, they, we have a lot of people moving constantly, migrating. And so you're training catechists or other persons, but in this area of catechesis, we're training catechists. And then not long after you hear they're announcing that they're leaving for United States of America or somewhere else in the world. And, mm -hmm. and so the constant process of training catechists for this important task is there. And that's one of the challenges. Another one that I was hoping to bring on stream there was, was, the, was the whole thing of, um, I think there's, there, there is need in the Caribbean church, there are a lot more in terms of how the, 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 the ways in which we catechize the materials that we use. I think Paul was speaking to that when I came back on just now. Um, but it's not just simply about finding a program somewhere. It is about making the programs that we use speak to our children and adults in the sense that we are drawing from, we are producing them from ourselves. Therefore, it's not seen as something that is imposed but it's in fact speaking to the stories of our people. And, and, and I think that's an important aspect that we need to be working on in the Caribbean church. Thank you everyone for sharing the challenges. I think we can all agree with some of the challenges here. And that's why, you know, we are in the, pro well, we have, you know, revamped the commissions coming out of the AEC, yes? which leads me to my next question. Well, my next topic of conversation. Just last, one last, one last thing. Sure, sure Bishop, sure, go ahead. Yes, this is a conversation, so go ahead. The children are nowadays very busy. Yeah. If you, if you, right, if you put the class on Tuesday, they have swimming, they have horse riding, they have uh, football, they have uh, ballet. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a constant negotiating. Uh, what is the best time? <laughs> and you can never get a class of uh, five or, or ten together. But right. a challenge. But that in itself is a challenge, <laughs> I think, too, because yes. like I have been constantly saying for years now, the truth is that our classes, our catechesis, is so boring in most cases that the children are not going to choose that over horse riding or swimming or something else. I, I think there's a lot of work to be done in terms of our uh, how we present our faith in, in, in a teaching format um, mm -hmm. as catechesis. And, and we have to make it interesting Yes. Too many of our children are bored stiff in our classes. They don't want to come really because it's not interesting. Um, and and they, the, the ones we do get is because maybe the parents force them or push them. But I think we need a lot of work to be done there that where our catechesis is so, so exciting that the children want to come. Yes. And they might even make a choice over the swimming or the or, or, or whatever else you know that is there to mm -hmm. be in our classes. Yes. Um, well, yes. I could say you know, Bishop. Um, well, everyone here who we're having this conversation that I mean, I remember being you know in first communion and confirmation and as well you know preparing for marriage and such, my programs luckily were very interactive and very activity based, which is why I could remember so much of it because it was very hands on. Mm -hmm. However, I know this is a different time. 
but we have the advantage of taking technology because that's where the kids are, that is where the children are at. There are so many resources online at our fingertips that we could incorporate, I believe, into, into how we do catechesis in our region. We just have to tap into it. Yes, it may take additional work and it might be new waters for us, but I think that's where we have to learn how to swim. You know, that's where I think we have to learn how to swim because the technology is with us and we are going with it. So, which brings me to my next, my next topic of conversation. Now, I hope that, you know, I'm not, you know, making this too challenging for you, but, you know, we're here to discuss certain things. Now, with this new commission, can you tell us what are some of the things you hope to achieve in catechesis in this region? How do you hope to bring it back? Well, How do we hope to bring it back? Lauren, maybe a little explanation because many of our hearers will not probably be a fee, but within recent times, the, the, the conference of bishops, the Antilles Bishops Conference, has been reorganizing the various commissions. The commissions are the, 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 the way in which the bishops are able to get things done in the mm -hmm. conference. Um, and so at the level of the bishops conference that reorganization has been taking place now prior to this reorganization we had a, a um a commission for catechesis which bishop carrill actually chaired we had one for education separate that bishop gabriel malze shared now in the reorganization those two dimensions of our lives as church came together with doctrine, that a commission on doctrine, and with the way our lives are organized and disciplined, canon law, and with theology. Mm -hmm. And so those, those areas came together under one commission, which is referred to as the Commission for Doctrine, doctrine. and Faith Formation. Mm -hmm. So it is under that commission now that catechesis falls. And what we did was to appoint two subcommittees that fall under this commission now one being for catechetics or mm. catechetics. and and um and so they've they've been working hard <laughs> these mm -hmm. two subcommittees one is on education and one in catechesis we have the theology of the caribbean group that will deal with theology and we have the canon law society will be with canon law but the subcommittee and catechetics have been working well. Now, some of the things that I could put out right away that they've been sharing um, out of their work, the, the need, first of all, to, to gather the diocesan directors of catechesis. So mm -hmm. they want to set up a networking with these diocesan coordinators. The diocesan coordinators, of course, will be in contact with their catechists within the so every parish might have a coordinator and mm -hmm. the catechist so the diocesan coordinator would be in contact with them and so they're setting we, we have already begun and they're going to meet um, fairly regularly on zoom um, mm -hmm. across the Antilles and strengthen each other support each other but also do formation things with each, with with them so that's mm -hmm. going to be happening the second thing is that they're going to be looking with the new catechetical directory that came out from Rome, they're gonna be looking at updating their guidelines for this right. region. So that's they're gonna start working on right now. And in that regard, most of the diocesan coordinators um, are attending a course offered by Dayton University that okay. will help them to be prepared for that, understanding the new directory, and then they will work on that. The other dimension that they've also looked at is, and we'll be looking at is training. How can right. we offer um, possibilities of training of catechists, you know? Mm -hmm. And that could be organized in, in different ways and at different levels. They're coming together within provinces or maybe, you know, assisting a diocese by giving information and stuff like that. But they're gonna right. be looking at how they can support each diocese in their training efforts for catechists. 
Okay, so, very, very nice. Thank you for sharing that, Bishop. So here I invite Paul into our conversation and I'm asking Paul, you know, you've been in this business. Well, I don't want to call it business. You've been on this journey for the last 12 years. And now that, you know, things are revamped and we have new commissions, what are some of your expectations being on the ground of this um, commission? Uh... Well, one of the one of the things that we had set out to do in the previous commission and again picked up this time around is uh, actually to establish this uh, uh, network among mm -hmm. catechists in the region. I think that is uh, for me that is very important because there is so much that we can learn from one another, so much mutual sharing that we can do to help each other out in this uh, work of catechesis. So that is one thing that I look very much forward to that we uh, that. Um, catechists from Suriname can learn something from a catechist all the way in Jamaica, you know, and as we can have this, 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 this sharing going on with or without bishops being present, you know, and, and mm -hmm. but as I mean, we, we should be able to reach out to each other um, without a structure being set up uh, for that, you know, and if, feel free that we can ask each other or share with one another, especially now that it's made so, made so much easier with online yeah. platforms. So that is one of the things that I really look forward to, this, uh, this network that we can establish in the, in the region uh, for catechists. Yes, and, and while you're talking, Paul, you know, there's one word that comes to my mind, collaboration among catechists throughout yeah. the region, you know, um, especially with the, you know, with technology and stuff, collaboration and sharing of yeah. ideas could be yes. made so much easier, you know? So that's a great, yes. that's a, that's a yeah. great. And, and, and Lauren. And especially what Bishop, uh -huh. Paul, one of the things that Paul would know very well because he worked hard on it in the previous commission was the whole thing of an assessment need, need assessment process, mm. which they okay. had started in the last commission of, on catechetics, and we're continuing with that so that once we have the networking set up with the catechists, they want to return to that needs assessment so each diocese can say to the commission, what are our needs? What, what do we need help from you for, you know? Right, yes. Um, Bishop Carol, I invite you into the conversation. Um, with this new commission, you know, what are some of the things, you heard the conversation, anything else you would like to add to what um, we're sharing here? No, the uh, most important uh, aim the, is to get uh, catechists throughout the Caribbean connected. Mm -hmm. and to, um, if they get to know each other and share ideas and motivate each other and inspire mm -hmm. uh, each other, then um, we will feel strengthened on the ground level to, to work on because uh, sometimes the catechist feels alone um, and lost. So if they are together, they can share their, their problems and they can share their joys also because it gives a lot of joy to work with uh, with children. And uh, during my time as a parish priest, um, I had a monthly evaluation with the catechists and we looked back and forward and we talked about each of the, the children and uh, we did house visits and sometimes mm -hmm. you were really um, shocked at mm -hmm. the situation at home. Parents divorced, children living with grandparents, uh, a boy living with a friend of his uncle. And you know, so when you get to know those things, take mm -hmm. a special interest in, in, in the kids. Mm -hmm. And then um, at the end, they're not so much concerned about how much they have learned, how many parables they know, or yeah. um, how many books of the Bible can they uh, recall by heart. But you would be happy if you can, uh, you know, uh, make sure that this child has a, uh, a safe home, has found mm -hmm. someone who um, takes better care of him or her. And then um, one of the things we always did with the catechists was, you know, um, we had a training session, we, we had a formation session, and we had an outing. And other outings mm -hmm. were always the, 
the main event yes. of the year. There was a lot of joy and laughter. And uh, we were a really team. After a while, that team was, was family. And yes. we, we went to each other's birthdays and things. So uh, it is, it's uh, fun also to do um, catechesis and, um, you know, to feel the gratitude when the kids call out your teacher or sister. Uh, I was in your class. Mm -hmm. So thanks so much, Bishop. And, you know, you are leading me into my next, um, I should say, invitation. So you mentioned the word gratitude, right? And we have over 15, um, well, we have more than that viewers here, but um, we have viewers from St. Lucia, we have viewers from Port of Spain, we have Guyana tuning in, we have um, all over the Caribbean, actually. We have over about 20 to 20, um, over 25 viewers on Facebook right now, a lot of which I believe are uh, some catechists. So I invite you, each one of you to share sh a brief thank you message, you know, to all our catechists out here um, who are watching and who may see this later today. But I invite you to share um, thanks um, for our catechists that um, have dedicated their time and service to us. Yes? Who would like to go first? Okay, I can. Uh, yes. I think I can go first. <laughs> Thanks, Bishop. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I would like to thank all those um, catechists who have become mothers because, uh, yes, I've only had uh, uh, female uh, catechist leaders who have really become mothers and friends to, to, the, to the kids. They went beyond, you know, um, uh, teaching uh, what's there on paper. They got to know the kids. Mm -hmm. they, beca they, they became, let's say, an alter ego or a mother or a friend for children who would be otherwise lost. So uh, when you uh, teach, you, um, you get very close to the heart of the, the next generation. And uh, I think it's rewarding if you can really change the heart of one of them, because you, don't know, you never know what that person, what kind of impact he will have in the rest of the world or she. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Bishop John, would you like to... Um... I, I bow to the experience for... Pardon? I bow to the experienced catechist among us. Yes. Paul, are you with us? Oh, <laughs> yes, I am here. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, of course, I, I, I joined Bishop Carroll in, in uh, thanking all the, the catechists. And <clears throat> one of the things uh, that, that uh, crossed my mind several times when I myself was actually in front of a group of children or adults doing catechesis, I sometimes wondered, Am I making a difference in anybody's life? You know what, what I'm <laughs> teaching you. Uh, so, but I think uh, everybody does, and some one way or another, you may not know uh, notice it at that time. But I think if I look at, uh, you have two bishops sitting here now online, myself and you also, uh, Lauren included. I think in each one of our lives, somewhere along the line, a catechist was involved in helping us grow up and in, in faith. And I think we should be thankful for those people that they. They actually help bring us to where we are today. And in that, in that sense, I want to thank all the catechists who are working now and that to, to be assured that in somehow you will, you are making an impact in that person's life. And one of the children you have before you might one day become a, um, a superior of a congregation or even a bishop or maybe a pope even. I don't know how <laughs> when that's, when that's gonna happen. The first pope from the Caribbean. But um, because once you're convinced that it is God working through you, then you know that you are making an impact. So thank you for uh, allowing that grace to flow through you to those children. Thank you, Paul. And I'd like to add my voice to Bishop Carroll and Paul and so many others, Bishop Gabriel Mansia, who is also part of our commission, um, couldn't make it this evening, but on behalf of all the bishops of the of the of the um, conference, I'd really like to say to all our catechists, 
not only the ones who are in the field today, but I'd like to recognize so many others that have, um, that have really done tremendous work over the years and have probably since long gone to their eternal reward. But the ones who are today walking in their footsteps, I want to really say to them, a grateful church thanks you. Without you, I don't know where we will be. You're really the ones out on the front line. And, and even as I say that, I recognize one of the greatest challenges we face today is living through this pandemic and how we have been able to either continue some form of catechesis or not, but it is a challenge. And with all the challenges that you face, some of which we raise today, and the indifference is one of the biggest ones, I think, where, where people just, it's just indifference. It doesn't matter really, if, you know. And um, we say thank you. Thank you for what you do. And, and in those moments when you feel like just walking away, in those moments when you feel that nobody really cares what you do, I just want to say to you, no, no, no. And above all, remember your work as a catechist, your vocation, not work, vocation as a catechist is a calling from God. It's not from us, it's from God. And what you do is important for God and for the church today. And so thank you very much. God bless you. And let us renew our efforts as we move forward, especially as we celebrate Catechist this Sunday coming and throughout this month. God bless. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for this, in for this conversation. I think it was exactly what we needed to get this week going and, of course, to continue the celebration of this month. Once again, I would like to say on behalf of the Antilles Episcopal Conference, a sincere thank you to all our catechists that continue to pave the way forward and continue to really dedicate their time and service. I'd like to thank Paul, Bishop John, and Bishop Carol for joining us and saying yes to this interview. Uh, with this conversation, I need to change my job. In this conversation, you know, and I just wanna say, Thanks to all our viewers, you know, for staying tuned with us through our technical difficulties. Please stay posted to the um, Antilles Episcopal Conference Facebook page, social media website this week, because we are going to be celebrating all things catechists this week. And of course, for the rest of the month. So I would like to wish everyone a blessed evening. And thank you once again for joining us. Take care. Until thank our you. next episode, be safe. God bless. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you.